Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another episode of Talk A Good Game. Actually, I messed that up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I have with me Chris, aka Quantum X, the founder of Hyperfrost Productions. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. I'm just trying to stay dry. <laughs> I hear that, man. The allergies is, is coming heavy. Allergies are just, they're built differently, man. I feel like ever since the pandemic, They've come back with a vengeance. Something is going on because they have they have rocked me. I've never had allergy issues. Anyways, you are a talented voice actor slash CEO of Hyperfrost Productions, which is a voice acting studio. How did you get started? Where did this all begin? Well, the idea started, um, I had always kind of wanted to do something with voice acting for a while. I just... Never really had um, a foundation to start with, I guess. But uh, whenever the trailer for the Le Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection came out, I knew that I wanted to do something for that. So I started, basically the wheels started spinning and I started putting this all together to start doing voice acting fan dubs for games like that. For like eight months now. The funny, the funny thing is, like, how we met was you were sending out applications for your voice acting on LinkedIn. Like, I was straight up looking for a nine to five job. So how do you, when it comes to the voice acting, because you have so many people and are you, are you still currently hiring through LinkedIn? Uh, yes. But I mean, because I have so many people on the team now, I'm, when I first started out, I had the problem where I didn't, I had not have many people helping me out. So I was having to like try to give roles to anybody I could. But now that my team is so big, I'm having the opposite problem where I have more people wanting parts than I have parts to give them. So I'm having to slow <laughs> yeah. that down a bit. <laughs> All right. That's that's dope. Like I said, the LinkedIn thing, I thought it was really clever how you did it. Um, not a lot of people that I see, especially the people. I, I guess what turns people off, some people, is that the LinkedIn is, I guess, more professional. You got to be – you kind of got to be there. You, you're not there from the bottom. But I like how you didn't you didn't care about that. You just went straight to LinkedIn, and it worked. From from what I understand, it worked really well. And I don't see a lot of people do that. So definitely, you got to pat yourself on the back, bro, because that, that was nice. That was a nice move. Well, originally, um, I, originally, I started just asking people that I knew on Steam, like my personal friends, for the parts. And then I searched online for where I could find voice actors, and that site Voice123 came up. I, tried, I got a few people on there. And then one of them, I think somebody recommended I, I try LinkedIn, so I got on LinkedIn, and it's that was that it, I blew up from there. <laughs> That's dope, man. Yeah, like your your the logo, it, it might be that logo, man. You designed that logo? I, I partially designed it. It was um, my friend uh, Turbo Thunderbolt or Benny, but he goes by Turbo. Uh, he I commissioned him to help me design the logo, and then I flared it up. Okay, yeah, yeah, because it, it got that. Of course, based off your inspiration, it got that Mega Man. It reminds me of that Mega Man uh, logo a little bit. With that, I don't know if you watch anime or so, even when you're playing games. How does the the voice acting affect you now? Do you pay more attention? Are you more in like? Are you more in tune with? Oh, that's how they did this. How how do you look at it? A little bit, yeah. Like I'm, 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 I now can understand whenever someone has like a bad mic or doesn't have a good mic or like, uh, when they're, I can, I'm trying to understand how to, how to word this. <laughs> Basically I can tell whenever they're alternating their voices more and stuff now. I, I hate with the, at, at least for Dragon Ball, I can't stand the sub version compared to the dub, which is very rare because the dub usually I, in the last few years, it's been getting better, but the sub for that one is just, it's not as good, bro. The, the Dragon Ball dub is where it's at. Uh, a go-to example that I would say is, uh, uh, if you're familiar with the Sonic X cartoon, uh, I not only do I hate the character of Charmy, but I hate the voice that they put on Charmy. <laughs> the freaking B. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 yo, there's so many, I remember you putting me on when we were getting ready for this interview, you putting me on to that legend of zelda show oh my god that oh, was yeah. a bad voice oh man did you ever check that out yeah 
Yeah, yeah, dude. Oh man, I I totally forgot because I remember seeing memes about it, mm-hmm. but then I didn't know what it was from. I was like, wait, where is this from? Is this real? The excuse then, me, princess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the excuse me, princess, bro. I I don't know what they're gonna do. We're, we're thinking I, about I don't doing know what they're gonna do with a link character. We're thinking about doing something with that for April Fool's next year, but I haven't figured out what to do yet. <laughs> Yo, y'all totally should. Yeah. Y'all totally should. My only thing is be careful in Nintendo, man. They be yeah. trying to shut people down, dog. Oh, yeah. They you know, they ruined that dude's life. And I, ironically, the dude's last name was Bowser. That, that was crazy. <laughs> it was really weird how his name was Bowser. Like, what kind of last name is Bowser? Like, really? Uh, That's the weird thing. So, yeah, man. So, but we're... We gotta be careful. We we want to do some Nintendo games for our channel, but we gotta be really careful because you basically gotta walk on glass around them. Like, I, I get it, I get it, and then I I don't because it's like all right, creativity. I'm with the creators, but at the same time, I get the whole philosophy of protecting it, especially when you're a brand like Nintendo, which is family, PG rated stuff. I, I get it, yeah. unfortunately, but. Some people got to just bite the dust like that. Some people just got to bite the dust, which sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Recently, uh, Moon Channel, I think that's what they're called, put out a video explaining why Nintendo was so protective of their IP. It was pretty eye opening as far as and like tells shows me exactly how I need to kind of <sighs> basically walking through a, a river of ghastly hold the match. <laughs> yeah. So how do you like when it comes to the voice acting? Can you? All right, say you take, like, a, a Mega Man, I think it's Mega Man Legends with the bad voice acting. Can you take the video and put your own voice acting behind it? Well, Would you get copyrighted for it, or how does it work? Well, since it's Capcom, they're pretty chill about this kind of thing, so we should be in the clear, but still be careful. But, yeah, as far as bad voice acting in Mega Man, the prime example is Mega Man 8. Where Mega Man sounds like a little, yeah. Mega Man sounds like a five year old girl, and Doctor Wily is drunk off his ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that dude. Is... <laughs> <laughs> and it's it. What makes it worse is that like because it was so old, the characters, their their faces. There's not a lot of animations for their face, so it's just stagnant the whole time. And he's yeah. just saying he's trying to like reflect his voice, go up, change the pitch to it. It's it just really bad. You, y'all got to work on that one. Yeah, y'all right, got to do that. Right now, the, the, right now, the next one is Mega Man 6 that we're working on, and then we got to do 7 after that. But when we get to 8, we're definitely going to redub those scenes. Yeah, you might have to redub everything <laughs> in that game. That's, that's going to be a big glass to fill. That's going to be a big glass to fill. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> oh. Mega Man 8's voice acting is notoriously bad. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yo, but, like, what is, we got to speak about why Capcom – hasn't done anything with Mega Man recently. And well, look, it's been besides like I'm talking like a new triple A game. Well, they they, they kind of did a while back with uh, Mega Man 11 cuz the the, uh, the original Classic Legacy collection sold so well that they put out Mega Man 11. And there's been rumors circulating for a few years that they're going to work on an, an X9 because of the Legacy collection of X uh being so well, but we haven't seen anything from that yet, but and there's also rumors of a Mega Man 12 coming out, but still not seeing anything about it yet. So they, I think they've mostly been focusing on these legacy collections, which I mean they're doing pretty good. Yeah, they definitely are. They definitely are. So, like, have you? I haven't gotten around to play the Legacy Edition yet. How do you feel about it? Have you gotten around to play it? I've been playing the classic one. Uh, that's where I've been recording some of the videos from, and also since the Battle Network collection just came out, I've been playing that, and it's it's really good. Yeah. And they 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 put a lot of work and effort into making these. It's basically remasters of the game. So so um, is this like is this one of those situations where they just HDified it, or is it one of those definitive editions where? This was supposed to be the edition you were we were supposed to get. You know what I mean? It's basically the definitive edition now. Like we're talking about twenty year old G- Game Boy Advance games brought to PC and new and modern consoles in a new collection. They added uh, online capability to them. Like you can battle people online from. A cr- There's not cross platform yet, but they're supposedly going to be adding cross platform. But like basically anybody on Steam can battle anybody else on Steam or Battle Network. 
They added online trading. They did bug fixes. They've um, fixed a lot of issues with like some of the music. Like for example, like Mega Man or Battle Network Six. There's a, there was a bug at the end of the game where even after you beat the game, the Crisis music would still play infinite loop on every area you went. So you always heard the same Crisis music over and over and over oh again. Oh my! <laughs> they fixed that for this collection, so you'll have the original soundtrack by, back during the end game. <laughs> Dude, yeah, and they. they, they I- the the uh, the yeah, Japanese continue. the Japanese only content that was cut out of the American releases previously is now all in this game. Yeah, yeah, and it's for sixty bucks too. Uh, if you get both collections together, yes, because it's volume oh one and volume God. two. Oh my yo! It's basically oh. ten games for if it's, if it's like you're basically like paying six dollars a game plus with all the bug fixes and online capability added. Hey, that that ain't that ain't sounding too bad, man. That is not sounding too bad. I like when remasters do that. Like, the last remaster that I really enjoyed was Tales of Vesperia. Hmm. The definitive edition. Because that game released on the 360. It was one of the very few JRPGs that released on Xbox. And it was exclusive. So, a lot of the content, when it eventually came out on PlayStation 3... They were able to add so much stuff. Like, there was a character named Flynn that was only playable for one mission on the 360. Mm. And then on the PlayStation 3, he was a a full-fledged character. And then when in the Definitive Edition, they added that. They added, (laughs) like, a a big dungeon. Tons of bug fixes, like you were saying. They just added so many quality-of-life improvements and extra content that if you played on the 360, you didn't get to experience. So... That's the type of remasters I'm more into. I'm not, unless I really love the game and I need it to just be up more up to date, then I would buy, or I'm more lenient on buying that type of remaster where just they HD it. But I'm not really into a remaster when they do just HD it. You got to add a little bit more for me. Yeah. That, that's just me. Like the uh, Battle Network games, starting with Battle Network 4, 5, and 6, they had a crossover with bot tie games, which is basically like a vampire hunting game, to where like you would have Mega Man in the bot tie games, and you'd have the character, I can't remember his name, from bot tie come over to the Mega Man games, and they had that crossover content. And it was still mostly there in 4 and 5, but in the English releases of Battle Network 6, all that content was completely cut out. But in this collection, all that stuff is back in the game now. Like complete sections of the game that were cut out are back. So as creators, we all go through our trials and tribulations. Oh my gosh. So many times I've recorded a video that's like an hour length and it just, something goes on. I can't use that footage. So many times that has happened. Like you say the wrong thing when you're recording. Uh, you, you just misspeak. There's so many things that just happen. What did, what did the most... The biggest things that piss you off when you're you're doing your voice acting. Uh, well, like you said, then the audio doesn't record or something. Uh, and, and not related to voice acting, but a few years ago, whenever uh, the game Alliance of Valiant Arms was still big, uh, they were shutting down the server, so I was recording my last few games on that uh, because I wanted to make a video of my last moments in that game where I was kicking some ass. And I recorded like five games and went to start record- editing them all together, and my mic recorded no audio for any of them. <laughs> and they were shutting down the servers like there's nothing oh my gosh in fact it didn't in fact uh it didn't even record any of the in-game sounds i had just video with no sound so i basically just had to put music over it and put it on anyways <laughs> just look <laughs> you were just looking like a bad dub <laughs> like you were just looking like a bad dub bro <laughs> no it's so annoying man like i my biggest i i think the one time, man, I, I had to walk outside, bro. I had to walk outside because this thing, I was, I was going to hurt somebody. I think <laughs> I was going to hurt somebody. I, I recorded this video. It was over 15 minutes. 15 minutes, man. Spent days on this video. I got to the rendering, and it, w- it would just stay at 99%. Mm. Whenever it got to 99%, it would crash. Every time the the program would just crash. I think it had something to do with one of the video files I uploaded, but dude, it was 
It was bad, man. It was bad. Like no person should have to go through that. <laughs> no person should have to go. It, it is the worst feeling when that happens, bro. Yeah. It it, it makes me contemplate like doing all of this. <laughs> I'm talking about like, yo, what? It, what's good? Like, why? Why'd you have to do this to me? I, I'm trying to work on my craft, and you just get in the way. You just being a dickhead, man. <laughs> like, it, it, it's so bad. Like, I, I just be going like, yo, maybe I should just do voice acting and not do this video recording stuff. I'll, I'll do the voice acting. I'll send my voice and then just do it, bro. It's so annoying. All right, so there's a lot of games. For instance, St Sony. Sony's been doing a phenomenal job when it comes to their storytelling trying to mirror the movies but still do their own thing in a gameplay kind of way how are you impressed or how are do you check out do you play any of the sony games and go like yo that's like the type of performance i want are you inspired by them do you are you influenced by any of their work well, I don't really have a PlayStation right now. Oh, I had a PS2, but I don't have any of the new stuff, so I haven't played any of the modern games. Damn. Yeah, that's old. That's yeah. old. <laughs> but uh, I've I've seen some stuff from like like The Last of Us, and uh, I've seen some older stuff. I mean, like the uh, well, I guess actually Resident Evil's Capcom, but uh, I, I've I've been seeing some stuff. It looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, because they do they do full on performances. And the Obviously, new God of they War do the too. yeah, yeah, like but it, now they're getting awards and stuff. I, I, I do think they gotta tone down the speeches because it, it ain't that serious. <laughs> Christopher Judge did the absolute most, bro. I, I was, I was pretty disappointed in my man. I was like, yo, I, I, I get it, but. <laughs> Like, chill, you gotta, we, we gotta get the show moving. No one really enjoyed the speech at the Video Game Awards. It was like, get to the reveals. Get, get to the reveals, dog. So, you know, like, with, do you ever envision yourself getting into, like, the triple A, like, do you see your company in, where do you see yourself in, 10 years your company in 10 years that's a better question well hopefully we've gotten our channel pretty big and monetized by then <laughs> but um i've i'm actually working with a game company right now called digimite where we're doing some like small voice acting roles for like like a little card games that they're doing um but hopefully we get attention of bigger companies and can start helping work with them too like i've got a pretty good talented team like the the girl I just hired to uh, play Tails in our Murder of Sonic videos, she, no pun intended, kills it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and she's like, Murder that's the perfect Sonic. Tails voice. Dude, that's yeah, that's awesome. That that's awesome, bro. You gotta always start somewhere, and you're already you're already starting off really nice. Like your con your channel is already well doing well with its numbers. You're getting views, and you gotta a real time gig from a professional company. You're killing it, dog. You're, you're really killing it. Yeah, we're man. almost 200 subscribers now. I think we just hit 82. 82 yeah. subscribers. That, it, it, that's especially hard today, man. Like people don't understand even getting to 100, 10, 50 is hard. It's hard. It takes a lot of consistency, a lot of hard work, just throwing shit at the wall. Hoping it works. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Well, I'm hoping that we get bigger with the Battle Network content we're about to be putting out because that's that's our flagship series right there. That's what we've been working on this entire, I, I been working so towards too, this man. entire time. I'll be there supporting you. Mm -hmm. I'll be there supporting you, man. Yo, like, I, I'm surprised I'm inv inv interviewing you this whole time. And yo, where's my uh, gig at, bro? <laughs> Am I not good good enough, bro? Like, do I got an audition or something? Hey, I offered you that <laughs> that role of Raul before. <laughs> So, I bet that yeah. I'm in there, bro. I'm in there, especially you giving you doing me a solid by being on the second episode of Talk a Good Game. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta flex my voice a little bit too, because people say I got a good voice, but you know when you're like, man, you lying, you lying. <laughs> I, I hate my voice. Well, Everyone well, hates their voice. Where are? But then they're critic. like, <laughs> yep, yeah, it, it, worst critic. It, I swear, because people like I'm not even trying to. To my own, actually, I am trying to toot my own horn a little bit, a little bit, 
But people go like, "Yo, you got a good voice. You got you should you got like a radio voice." I'm like, "Yo, I I don't know what you guys are talking about." But then as I was doing my YouTube, <laughs> at, like one of the comments was, "You got a good voice." I was like, "All right, maybe I'm the crazy one. Maybe maybe I am the crazy one saying you got a I got a bad voice." So, but just so it, long as good. you're uh, just so long as you're saying that you have a good voice for radio, not a face for radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, man. We're 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 gonna end it. We're gonna end the interview off with something fun. You know what time it is, Chris. <laughs> you know what time it is. Yep. You gotta pull it up. <laughs> you gotta pull it up. We are going to reenact a scene from the massive popular game, The Last of Us. It is the one of the most iconic scenes from the game. It is when Joel tells Ellie, uh, I, I don't even care if you didn't play the game. I, honestly, it's, it's kind of weird if you haven't. But it is when Joel goes like, yo, you got to leave. You going with Tommy. I'm not the right person. You all know the scene. He's in the red, fl- uh, red, uh, God damn it, red fleece. He's in the red fleece. Um, you already know what time it is. I'm playing Joel. I'm playing Joel. I'm going to give you the light roll of Ellie. That ain't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't too bad. So let's get it. I don't know let's if I can do her voice out. very well, but I can try. <laughs> you guys will rate our performances. Here we go. All right. And scene. Joel enters the room and scoffs in disbelief. Ellie sat slouched by the window reading a girl's diary. Is this really all we had to worry about? Boys, please, deciding which shirt goes which skirt, it's bizarre. Get up. We're leaving. Come on. And if I say no? Do you even realize what life means? Huh? Running off like that? Putting yourself at risk? It's pretty goddamn stupid. Well, I guess we're both just disappointed. I guess we're both disappointed with each other then. What do you, what do you want from me? A minute, you just want to get rid of me this whole time. Tommy knows this area better. Ah, fuck that. Well, I'm sorry. I trust them better than I trust myself. Is that what you want to hear? Stop with the bullshit. What are you afraid? <laughs> Stop with the bullshit. What are you afraid of? I'm gonna end up like Sam. I can't get infected. I can't take care of... I can take care of myself. I'm sorry. How many close calls have we had? Well, we seem to be doing all right so far. And now you'll be doing even better without me. Well, I'm not... I'm not her, you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> Maria told me about Sarah, and I... Ellie, you are, you are treading on some very thin ice. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have ever cared about has either died or left me. Everyone. Fucking except you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I'd rather be more scared. You're right. (laughs) You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your daddy. And we are going our separate ways. All right. (laughs) Let's give it up. Let's give it up for Ken Wall and Quantum X. Chris, it's been a pleasure. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing up to the episode two of Talk A Good Game. This is a brand new video series that I started a few months ago this year. And I'm really trying to get things started. I'm trying to make this a late night game talk show. Something that's never been done before. Something for the gaming community to really cherish. And really just come here every night. Not every night. But almost every week. And enjoy something new. Pick up on something. Pick up on new stuff like this. Maybe whoever watches this video becomes a voice actor. Part of Hyper Frost Production. And most importantly... I'm trying to highlight these wonderful creators that are part of our community making gaming better. Again, 
let me get another round of applause for, a, a round of applause for Chris. Again, I thank you so much. Closing words. What do you have to say? Go plug yourself. Go right ahead, man. Well, if you want to check out the uh, the video game fan dubs that we're doing, how to Hyperfrost Productions on YouTube. We also have a behind the scenes channel called Hyperfrost Behind the Scenes, where we can see like audition tapes and test videos and stuff. We've got a lot of things coming up right now. I'm working on uh, Mega Man Six, Battle Network One, and a Mother's Day special video. And we're also lining things up for that Murder of Sonic series as well. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of things going on and. Also, I've got to go fund me out for my mom because she's about to have lung transplant surgery, so we're needing help with that. Uh, and, yeah, that's about it. All right, man. Well, on that note, you already know I'm Ken Wall. This is another episode of Talk A Good Game. Everyone, have a good night and stay safe.